president has also announced some austerity measures in regards to what must change. He said, he promised on Friday that uh, there will be more changes which will be coming soon. But let's just refresh our memory on what he said on that day. Cutting the entire amount in our assessment would significantly and drastically <clears throat> affect the delivery of critical government services while borrowing the whole amount in full will occasion a fiscal deficit by a margin that would have significant repercussions on many sectors including our exchange rates and interest rates. Whatever we are going to borrow, the difference will increase our fiscal deficit from what I intended to be 3.3% of our GDP, it will now go up to 4.6% of GDP, still lower than last year, and will be used to fund some of our critical government services. Right, and some of those critical government services include NGCDF, it, it includes um, um, the financing of medical interns, the hiring of medical interns, a university, new university financing model, a financing of that, and so many other recurrent expenditures. And as that happens, of course, the president spoke about um, forming a public debt forensic audit team that has now suffered a blow. You see the story in the papers today. The Daily Nation is reporting Ruto suffers blow as court holds task force to audit public debt. And of course, the people that have gone to court are saying that uh, partly that is the work of the Office of the Auditor General, which is an independent constitutional office that is mandated uh, to look into the questions of uh, public debt. The Law Society of Kenya has already uh, indicated that it will not be participating in a letter signed by the CEO of the council. Um, yeah, but um, Moshmo Cheng, so here we are, and the president has been making several statements the past few days to sort of contain the situation, but also to correct it. Uh, first, if you look at, um, and I hope you're not offending any law, if you're to discuss what has just happened uh, with the forensic audit team, does it have a place in the Constitution? Yes, the president can appoint task forces, but can he do so on issues that are squarely under a certain constitutional body? You know, when I was here last again, Sam, I told you this, and I'll repeat it, that our president must get a new set of advisors. <laughs> I believe in that totally. Economic, legal, social, agriculture, because the president, this is a legal matter. He doesn't speak on this himself. He's guided on what the law says. And of course, this is some of the pressure that's coming from the Gen Z and the Kenyans that they want this to be done. And not just the Gen Zs. The cry for the audit of our national debt has been here for a while, Sam. Mm. And I believe that the right body to do this, and, and, and just to follow up, up, upon what uh, uh, my friend Daisy said, as in Parliament, just need to give the General the budget. Hmm? Just give them the resources to do this and ask the National Treasury to be open about it. Mm -hmm. Because the custodian of national debt is the Treasury. They're the ones who know who they, who they borrow from and where they borrow from and how much they borrow. It doesn't require a commission or a task force. It requires a specialized office. And that specialized office was set up by the Constitution of Kenya that says that part of the mandate of the Office of the Auditor General is to audit public debt every so often. And, and so I believe that that institution is so singularly qualified and so singularly equipped to carry out this function. And I agree with those who say that this should have been left to the Auditor General. Mm. And I want to request those you know, who are appointed therein to read uh, the signs of the times. And just like uh, Justina Omai has said, she's on leave, she, she's on maternity leave, and the faith of the emperor said she's not available for this. I would request everybody else who have been appointed to let the body that is concerned. And you know, you just mentioned the fact that we need to strengthen our institutions and allow them to work. I've in more than one occasion heard my president say that, and I believe he means it. And, right. and there's nothing wrong, like we just did with the, with the finance bill, there's nothing wrong in saying that, yes, I'm guided, 
the right institution, then we should, we should allow to do this. But because I, I, I'm thinking that maybe he thought that we need something more, some specific body to approach this in a clinical manner. But you know, a hurriedly assembled body that has no expertise may not give us what we need. And so I believe that we should just equip the office that is concerned to do this, to be able to do this for us. And, and, and so that not every year no, or I, every I, time I we have an issue. you that he needs no, to get a different no, set no, no, of no, no, not every, Yeah, not every, not, because you know, if we now audit the public debt today, then again next year or the other year we're going to have another task force to audit it if you have issues with it. That's why we set up this body. It's a standing body. Mm -hmm. It's going to be there in perpetuity. And so let this be done by the body. So, so what I'm asking so. is, you're saying that he needs to get a different set of advisors, but he sought to defend the Constitution himself, not the advisors. Yeah, but, 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 but this has been put in context, Sam, that the president works with our other institutions, and that's why we have the Office of Auditor, Auditor General. We, we have offices that guide the president on, on matters economic. We have those that advise the president on matters legal. That is the truth. And, and, and so I believe that before he signed this legal notice, he sought advice. From, from his people. And, and you know, I've told you this, Sam. And this, I say now that I'm in Kenya Kwanzaa. In the party that I lead called the MDG, we just come from a retreat. Mm. And we've decided that one of the things that we must do, and it doesn't matter what happens, is that we must ensure that at all times we uphold the Constitution. The President of Kenya has been given a very good chance. In fact, I'm not sure. Why up to now the president still has retained his set of economic advisors after what happened and what has happened in the last 18 months? And I believe that if we continue this way, we'll, we, we'll, we'll keep on blaming one after the other. Let's just be clinical. Let's look at the Constitution and be, uh, be faithful to the Constitution. So you've decided as MDG that you're going to uphold the Constitution. That is what must happen. So you're the leader of the party. Correct. So is, do you have a responsibility there to uphold the Constitution? Yes, I do. Do you have advisors? Yes, I have advisors. What is their responsibility? To advise me on the things that, that for example, I've been advised now as regards, uh, what did we, discuss? we discussed so many things yesterday yeah. and the day before. Yeah. I've been advised on the impact of, uh, you know, the finance bill and, you know, the position what, to take on what it. What if they give you advice that is contrary to what you believe in upholding the Constitution? What do you do? I, I, in, on this occasion, I think the President honestly no, believed. Yeah. As the leader of MDG. You see, if you're given advice on an area that you don't have expertise, then you take that advice and implement it. And that's why he said that on this, I believe that the President was not properly guided on the legal implications of his gazette notice. Is I mean, there, the, intention, the intention of the president is good, is, that he wants to respond, he wants to, respond yeah. to a need that has been raised by the nation, that we need to know the extent of a public debt. It's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a concern that is genuine, and yeah. I believe that he honestly <coughs> wants to deal with that issue, but I think the advice on how to deal with it was the, is the one that, was, that, that, is, that, that is offending the Constitution. Is there a chance that this was just a, a move to put out a fire? I don't think so. I honestly believe that the president wants the public to know how much this country owes. We have, the, the only problem we have, is we have credible information that nothing has moved since that announcement. Because, because it's illegal. The casualties can't be implemented because it's illegal, as you've seen. Why would a legal committee move? And I still insist. don't you think this was just to put out a fire? I, I don't think that. And, and if that would be the case, Sam, it would be so unfortunate. It would be so, uh, so unfortunate if our president will proceed on the basis of PR okay. and, and, and putting out fires mm. instead of dealing with issues that are being raised by the Kenyans. Okay. And that's okay. why I said I honestly believe the president genuinely wants to address the issue raised by Kenyans as regards public debt. And I still believe that he still has the means to nudge, as it were, mm. the, 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 the Auditor General's office. If the money is what is lacking, as in Parliament should be asked to, in, in this, what's going to come in okay. as, as I, a I, budget, I, I hear you. give money to that office checking. to deal with the issues that the President addressed in that regard. All right. Arnold, um, do you believe that the intention is to actually form a forensic audit team of the public debt? Yes. I believe so because some, uh, sometimes when we explain the governance architecture in this country, we sometimes do not go into uh, quantify mm. why, and I've used the word quantify deliberately, quantify why we had these offices. You know, some, as a matter of fact, the office of the Auditor General is an extension of parliament. Because depending on how you what look... What do you mean? I, I'll get you there. Yeah. Depending on how you look at the functions of parliament, mm -hmm. they could be five, seven, but largely we go with three, depending on how you look at it. Mm -hmm. Number one is representation. Number two is legislation. Number three is oversight. Parliament cannot do oversight 
without the office of the Auditor General. So if Parliament has to function as Parliament, the office of the Auditor General must be functional. But you know what? Kenyans have been asking about the status of our national debt, and we have had the office of the Auditor General in place, constitutional as it is, and it's supposed to be doing its work, yes. And have they been looking at it? Yes. But are Kenyans satisfied with what the Auditor General has done on that? No. Otherwise, they wouldn't be asking. Parliament, as oversight, should be doing that particular bit. That question should have been answered long time ago. The committee, or rather the task force the president is putting up, should have been an output of parliament on their own. They should actually have worked around if they really mm -hmm. believed that that was an issue. So parliament has failed on that. And I need to emphasize this. I have got Mishmiwa here. So sometimes, you know, you say these things and you get bashing after that, especially if you work for a party like myself. But the weakest link in our governance has been parliament. It's, that it's we still, cannot run away from. Still is, actually. When we actually came up with the Constitution 2010, we hoped, and I know hope is not a strategy, <laughs> that so many people gathered together cannot conspire against a nation. We were doing away with imperial presidency and accumulated so much power in parliament because we thought a group of people cannot sit together. There are so many, and they're coming from different persuasions. They cannot conspire against us. But have you realized how, when it comes to their interests, they speak one language. You don't hear them talking about those differences, but when it comes to the public interest issues, somehow they run around. They blow cold and hot. So on the issue of the public debt, the president is doing the right thing because it's the public that has asked. And setting up a task force is not something that is over and above the ambit of the law or what the president can do. <coughs> we can argue from whatever end. So, and so, that does so, not stop so let's the office. Assume yes. the task force goes ahead and does its work, yeah. and they get a report. Yes present to the, to the president. Yes. What does he do with it? He'll take it to parliament. Parliament can still take it to the office of the auditor general. Whatever way we are looking at it, we are discussing. We go back so to it should have, it's wait, cyclic wait, wait. sum. He'll take that report to parliament I, I'm as, saying, as of a course. what? For action where necessary, that is not a problem. How? It's going to parliament. In what format? The president has done memos to parliament. The executive can only introduce proposals to parliament through Yes, bail. as a proposal, when he does that, it doesn't change. And by the way, Sam, if that committee ends up doing what the Office of the Auditor General has not so far been able to do, then you are saying that we, the people who have actually asked the president, remember that as the president does this, he's also responding. You know, public participation is not a suggestion. It's not a circus. It's not drama. What has been happening in the streets has been public participation. And the, other than the fatalities that have come with that, but, there's but nothing wrong yes, with people actually yes, asking for out answers. public participation. And as the leader but of the nation, the president, democracy, uh, we are a constitutional democracy, but that constitution does not make such actions as the president has taken illegal. It's I'm not, not. I'm not, I'm not saying it's it's We are not a competent I'm court. I'm just asking, yeah. because action has to be taken. For instance, yes. whatever they find about the public debt, probably say that uh, certain resources were stolen, cannot be accounted for. Is it actionable? Mm -hmm. It's actionable. As, on its own. How? It's actionable. How? You see, whatever comes out of it, number one, what is, how do you act on a report? Number one, you further either do a further research on the same, or so plan further. Public resources it's or task still, force that will be subjected to we further. Have got, we have got agencies that can act on it. Like, like for what? example, if you have got a, a report yep. that says that we got a certain loan and it never got here, for example, ESCC can act on that on their own, using that, for example, as the agenda setting notes for them to actually pursue that end. We have got enough agencies to act on that. Since the people of Kenya feel that we do not understand where our money goes, we do not understand the national debt. So, so you're saying a report around. of the task force can be part of the evidence? If that had actually been worked on, of course it's uh, the lead. Whether you're calling it a tracer, you want to call it a lead, but that sends us in a certain direction. Otherwise, some you, the question you're asking presupposes that the people who've gone to the streets and who are asking, that they want to understand the status of our national debt do not know why they're asking. They are asking for a reason. No, Number one, they want to know. Saying. I'm asking about that's what I'm saying. If you say, because when, when you say that once we get that report, what do we do with it? 
it presupposes that the people who asked that question probably didn't know. That no, no, not what. that is not what I'm talking about, Arnold. I've asked you a question. If a report comes from the task force, yes. what does the president do with it? It's not just the president because alone who needs to make it public and that because, ends the story. Because the Constitution <laughs> talks about, uh, the Article 229 talks about the office of the Auditor General mm, yes. and they report to the National Assembly. Mm -hmm. And the National Assembly will take action and uh, they, they can recommend execution of certain things. Mm -hmm. So how about a president's report? Uh, let me just ask you, Sam. A question to respond to a question. Uh -huh. The Office of the Auditor General also produces documents on the national debt. Yeah. There are times, for example, when the Office of the Auditor General came out and told us that we have been unable to get documents. They do that a lot of times, right? Mm -hmm. What do we do with their reports? Number one, Parliament should be acting on it. What has Parliament done on that, for example? And, and, and so some the answer would be, are we going to let institutions that are supposed to work to be incompetent mm. and then we create new, new ones that are not even illegal to then do their jobs? The, the, the point here is this, that if it's parliament that has failed, if it's over the general that has failed, let us deal with those ones and make them work. Okay. Let us not start piling up. You know, I mean, it's, it's, we've discussed this. Let the institution that we set up in the new constitution do their jobs and where they fail and... I'm happy ABC is being formed. If we have failed as parliament, let us all be recalled by our constituents so that we do the right thing for them. But you don't, you're not going to set up a situation that, I mean, the question is very instructive. So the Genesis have asked for this report. The president appoints a task force, which hopefully in this situation is going to get this report that Maliba is talking about. And then the president makes it public and ends the story. What, what, how will that help the country? Well, the people will so, 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 be so, 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 so. The, the Gen Z's are asking, making a very genuine concern. If the president feels that, okay, you raised a concern on public debt, I think the one officer that has not done its work well is the Office of the Auditor General. Let's make it work. The, the, you'll understand that this is what we set up for ourselves. We don't set up another uh, task force. I mean, it's going to be high, held up in the, in the High Court for a while. What have you achieved? Has the Office of the Auditor General failed? No, it has been deliberately hampered. You see, that is the other thing. I agree uh, with uh, Honorable Ucheng that uh, we absolutely must strengthen the institutions that exist. And that's what the president ought to have done because, you know, the information is actually there. We know the Office of the Auditor General, not just under this administration, even in the previous administration, has mm -hmm. been hampered in, its, in the execution of their role. When we read, and I said this earlier on, when we read the, the Auditor General's report, it is actually a litany mm -hmm. of mismanagement, misappropriation of public funds. Parliament has not acted in it. So we really need to put the blame squarely where it is, but we cannot say that the Office of the Auditor General has not done its work. The Office of the Auditor General has been deliberately hampered and weakened. So mm -hmm. strengthen that office and let them do what they ought to do. It is unlikely that uh, the task force is going to come up with anything that we don't already know, you know? Because uh, we've already, we've had the controller of budget on record talking about questionable spending, not knowing even where funds have gone. We have the Auditor General on record. So there's nothing new mm -hmm. they are going to tell us, okay? So I, I think that uh, um, uh, I want to, I, personally, I believe that it was really about putting out a fire, you know, um, trying to at least look like you are doing something, you know, right. so that people say, okay, okay, let's see where this is going. But actually it is going nowhere. So put the resources, <laughs> where they need to be strengthened those offices because that would have built uh, further confidence by the way if the president had now said the auditor general uh, you know these are the actions i'm taking towards additional resources i propose that parliament allocate additional resources to the auditor general and give them a time frame within which mm -hmm. let's have a comprehensive report and everything with Recommendation, actionable recommendations that we can act on, you know, that, that Parliament can right. act on. I think that's fine. On the issue of uh, uh, the, the proposed cuts, you know, it is only Parliament that can make decisions on budget, not the President. Even as the President is standing there making uh, that speech saying, I have decided to make cuts on this and this and this, those are proposals that he has to take to Parliament. It is Parliament that ought to ultimately decide on whether these cuts, you know, the, the proposed cuts, um, and the, the, to decide on where the cuts will be right. and look at the implications of where they are, you know. So I think that this brings us back to now calling on parliament to step up.
you know? Parliament must step up. Parliament must stop behaving like an appendage of the executive, right? They are the custodians of the public purse, and they must represent the people. For me, when it comes to issues of uh, cuts, my biggest concern is cuts to social spending, right? The areas where the, because already, in social spending, we had already seen fiscal consolidation. We had already seen cuts to that. So further cuts and their implications, I think that's a conversation that we must have. And even when these proposed cuts are brought to parliament, we must have public participation on that. Let us all weigh in so that we look at what the implications of those cuts are. I think it was unfortunate to see the judiciary acting on a circular by treasury and saying, hey, you know, we're not going to, we're, we're freezing the hiring of uh, the appellate court judges because what does that do for access to justice, you know? Mm -hmm. So, so and, 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 you know, I think that ministries, departments, and agencies of government have already been told to submit their, their they need the, to submit their uh, budgets, you know, the, uh, according to the proposed spending. And I think that every... Uh, department can actually defend their budgets and right. JSC should have been ready to defend the judiciary's budget because already as things stand the judiciary is actually uh, falling behind on delivering justice to Kenyans. So even in terms of spending, when we look at where the bulk of the money goes, eh? mm -hmm. when we look at our budget, where does the bulk of the money go? Bulk of money goes to executive mm -hmm. and consolidated fund services. Judiciary, parliament, they take very little. So we also need to see parity in those cuts. You can't say for the one who is getting 1 billion and the one who is getting 2,000 shillings, at a, we are going to cut equally. You can't. Mm -hmm. There has to be parity in how these budgets are cut. Okay. And well, we must be careful case. not to hamper, not to cut on social spending. All right. Because it will exacerbate an already bad situation. And, and I think there has been movement because the last letter that we saw that was proposing cuts of up to 178 billion shillings uh, just before the passage of the finance bill 2024, it was touching on services like medical interns, um, mm -hmm. help uh, issues, NGCDF, but um, there is a letter that was circulated uh, by the National Treasury to accounting officers indicating several services that will have to be cut, including um, recurrent expenditure like uh, car loans to public servants, housing loans to public servants, research feasibility studies, project preparation and design. Um, all these are being cut 100%, that uh, there will be no resources for that. Communication supplies and services are cut of 20%, uh, domestic travel and subsistence, and other transportation costs, 50% cut, and also there has been a cut on some development expenditure with the National Treasury indicating that there will be no expenditure on new uh, programs um, and no contracts will be signed up until there is clarity that there is sufficient allocation. I wanted us just to listen to one a clip of the spouse of the deputy president who reacted to what is becoming and actually the, de the president indicated that there will be movement of budgets from the offices of the first lady, the spouse of the deputy president and spouse of the prime cabinet secretary. How can it be that somebody somewhere decides to take us back where we have come from? Ah, partner. No, this thing must stop. And we can't, we, I will not stop because of our budget. I believe that we can raise this money ourselves, even the young people. I saw you raising money to be able to do what you needed to do. I would like you to raise money. And each one of you take one of your young people and change their minds. Let them start walking in the path that is righteous. I saw them and see the real ones, the ones who are advocating for the right things. I saw them, they were supporting each other, they were loving each other, and they wanted to speak in a mature way and to dialogue with the nation and to tell people there is a need for us not to be corrupt, right? That is Drokas Rigadi Pasta. And also I understand that um, the Speaker of the National Assembly communicated to the National Assembly on May 17th that um, out of 63 reports received from the Office of the Editor General since the year 2012, the year of our Lord, only one report had been acted upon by Parliament. <laughs> one out of 63. So one report every 12 years. <laughs> 
So you want to say something? No, I wanted to say a couple of things. One, as a party, uh, <laughs> we believe that this talk about cuts, Sam, mm -hmm. we believe is, is gaslighting us who voted, those of us who voted no. It is meant to guilt trip us. Mm. I don't think you need to have any cuts for this reason, Sam. Mm. I'm so convinced that this, the resources we want to raise, we can raise as a country. We just need to stop corruption and to do reforms at KRA. We've been told that, for example, the kind of monies that go into tax refunds that are dubious, that cannot be accounted for, are almost 300 billion. Okay? We have been told that some KRA staff have set up parallel KRAs where you go and you know, you're asked, how much do you owe KRA 100 million shillings? How much do you want to pay 50? Okay, you're going to, going to pay 10 here, then 20 there. So the, the idea that we're doing this cut called the finance bill, uh, mm -hmm. Sam, for me, is not, it's, it's, it's meant to like, you know, punish Kenyans that because you voted no and you went to the streets and you did this, I believe is the wrong way of going about it. I believe that we can conduct reforms, we can ensure that this, our issue, Sam has never been a revenue issue, mm -hmm. and you've been told this really on this set. Our Sorry. biggest issue is how we spend the monies we get. That in a country like this, we actually had offices called office of the first lady, office of the second lady, office of the, the, the wife of the prime, mini, prime company secretary. And, and there are so many offices that are dubious, even at the county level. Mm -hmm. You know, to, to even imagine that we fund those ones, it tells you how, how, how much rich we are as a country. That the, we, we take in so much garbage in terms of what happens in our budgeting. That, that, so, 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 so instead of just putting our mouths where our, 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 our monies are, we now go on a guilt tripping uh, trip. That because you refuse this, now you have to take this kind of, I, I refuse that kind of thinking. I believe we must just do the reforms necessary to ensure that the carrier is doing the right job, the treasurer is doing the right job, and anybody who, is, who, has, who has access to public money is spending those monies in an accountable manner, transparent manner. I mean, public procurement in this country is harm is the most expensive. Just check the amount of money we pay in building one kilometer of roads and compare that with how much Ugandans pay for one kilometer of road or Tanzania. Mm -hmm. Just check the kind of money we spend on buying public goods and services. They are all bloated. Mm -hmm. So, so I, I, I believe they are, if you need cuts, there are places where you could need cuts without, without doing these things. We are doing that, oh, we now have to reduce this kind of budget and those kind of budgets. No. Can you imagine, Sam, we spend 680 billion shillings in a year in, in education. But if you go to the villages now, children are being sent home to pay school fees. Imagine. We're spending so much money in that regard. So I, I don't believe our issue is revenue. Our issue is how we spend the revenues we raise. And I want to request those who are concerned, mm -hmm. including parliament, control of budget, of the auditor general. Let's do the jobs we are. I mean, our new constitution is now not new, it's more than 10 years old sets up very broad principles and specific ones on how we're going to spend public money. Absolutely. If those ones were adhered to some, we will not need to go that way. Number three, and as, 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 as I leave this particular you know, issue, right. is that also we must now going forward learn to cut our clothes according to our sizes. Who says we must have a four trillion, four trillion budget? That every year we must increase our budgets. Who says that we must, you know, who is going to die because a road was not built here or, you know, a, a, somebody didn't do, you know, a CSR function somewhere? Who says we're going to die, all of us, mm -hmm. because, you know, uh, some bridge was not, you know, repaired? So, so I believe that every year, and, 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 and when, 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 when this government came in, mm -hmm. I was so uh, happy because they said, that we're going to have what we're calling zero-sum budgeting, mm -hmm. where you start from nothing mm. and then say, but then we are, not, we are not done so. We are piling upon piling. In fact, the budget we are doing now is the budget that was being done in 1963. How does government budget? We've not gone into the inconclusion how the inconclusion It just put a factor there. It's, it's supposed, yeah, it's supposed to, to budget. And so I think if you organize the way you are budgeting, mm. We will get this money. And you don't think Parliament can help us do this? No, because we can. In September, I, I, I can the budget tell you policy this. statement will be there. I, I see in the budget committee, and I believe we can. But I can tell you, Sam, also, mm. that we've given too much room for negative interference in the way we work in Parliament. And if we were, as Parliament, to just say, yes, the executive has given us a budget, but what do we think as legislators? We are people's representatives. What do we think? Most of the time, we take what we, what we are given by the, by the Treasury line who can sinker. 
You know, I'm just reflecting on <laughs> when you said that um, it is advisors that are misleading um, the head of state. I'm just wondering who is misleading parliament. Parliament are misleading, <laughs> misleading, misleading themselves. themselves. I've told you. They are, I've told okay. you that they are the weakest I, I, link. Look, look here, some I've told and I've read a bit on television that one, based on what's going on now, mm. I think every individual member of parliament must search their soul. You saw last week, uh, Sam, the debate in the Senate. Every other single senator has got their voice. I mean, their minds are back. Even those who would tell us things in public that you'd wonder where they have come from. I heard them speak in the Senate last week and I wondered where this Damascus moment had happened. I believe what Genesis have done was worth it. And okay. where I am as David Ucheng, I'm telling you, I think I'm going, I'm going to have to change so many things the way I've handled myself in public <laughs> and how public affairs are conducted. So, I, 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 I can assure you. Take a look at the feedback, then it can, it can yeah. come for closing remarks. Uh, Citizen TV Kenya, uh, Sam Gituku, the hashtag to use is Citizen Debrick. By failing to make changes to government uh, shortly, as he promised to do, the president is slowly dancing towards the epicenter of public outrage. The more time he takes to effect changes, the more angry the Gen Zs, millennials, and other patriotic Kenyans become. That's Okelo Molimo. Frank Orinde, the crisis of IBC is largely its independence. Since time in memorial, the state has um, always had a hand in controlling the electoral body, and that's why its formation is always a bone of contention. We should allow independent bodies to work independently and fairly. Um, Remy Butia, 2024 marks the 12 year point for Kenya's boundary delimitation process, which is required by Article 892 of the Constitution of Kenya. It is critical to ensure fair representation and boundary delimitation of constituencies is vital to achieving this goal. Um, Gadu Agashora, the real arsonist here is Parliament, both sides in both houses. If we had responsible MPs, we shouldn't be where we are now. The minority, majority structure is also injudicious. David is right. Once IBC is in place, Kenyans should clean the rot. Sanex Ondogere, the composition of the IBC can vary, but the principles of independence and impartiality should be upheld. Um, who else? Daniel, you're saying that it is no question that the political class literally J writes constitutional mandate. Government ought to work for its people. It's high time we, should in, uh, we hold institutions to account. The selection of panel nominees cannot sabotage the cause. And in general, Zara, finally, credible IBC should be reconstituted by now. Waiting for 11th hour will bring a lot of confusion and add more advantage to the ruling regime. I'm sure there's one more. Uh, Gabi Wakasiaka, we need to have a new IBC commission recruited as a matter of priority. Narok Township Ward has stayed without representation for almost a year now, and the people of Narok need a by-election like yesterday. So l let's close starting with you, um, Arnold, on what you think uh, should be our takeaway from this conversation this morning. Some, my closing remarks would rather be questions rather than the takeaway. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, I looked. I, I didn't have an opportunity to respond to the second uh, lady, uh, Pastor Dorcas, uh, statement. So I would begin with a question on that end. So, what does it say to us as a country when, at the slightest of shaking, the first of the things to fall, even if it's just as a gesture, is the family? The reason why uh, we've had first ladies, offices of first ladies, and wherever they are practiced, even in other jurisdictions. Mm -hmm. It's normally a way of actually bringing family, as in to value family, uh, part of it. Whatever they do normally is normally on the side of charity and CSR. But I'm actually just asking, what does it say of us as a country when, on the slightest of shaking, mm -hmm. the first among the impacts is on that little part, platform, that is family? Mm -hmm. Second, what does it say of us as a nation when, in the manner we govern ourselves, the other part that actually gets impact is faith. You've heard people talk about occupying church. What does it say about us as a people? Secondly, there's the place of auditing. Whatever I, I want us, the takeaway home for us should be questions. There's the part of auditing who we are as a people. So if you watched TV, there are questions I think no one has asked. 
that city hall went up in fire. I don't want to call it uh, protesters who burned it. Let me say that whoever put up the fire was an arsonist. Two kilometers away, there's the Nairobi fire station. There was no fire engine to put out a fire when city <laughs> hall was on fire. When the legislature, actually it's the police, uh, it's the police uh, tear gas crowd control vehicle that was actually putting out fire. What does it say of what we have in place? What does it say of us as a people when parliament is going up in fire and it's actually at the heart of Nairobi and there is no fire engine that showed up from City Hall, less than two kilometers away, Sam. And then about two or three years ago, as a country, we put in a number of billions and put up a system. It's called the IC3. Uh, the, properly, it's called the command, the, Depart the Directorate of Command, Control and Communication. Mm. And we put out cameras across the city. It has got an analytics integration to it. In the morning, when that system was working, you can actually even know how many people are coming to the city and you can prepare adequately. What happened to the IC3 on that particular day that people came to town? I'm talking about 25th June. That people came to town and the Nairobi command could not use the advantage, why do we invest in such things when they don't work? It turns out that the IC3 is not working because when we were doing the expressway, somehow the contractors cut the cables and therefore the country, the city is in darkness some. What does it say of the billions we put in these things and we don't ask questions? You know, you know Arnold, then finally, we, we were closing. I, I, I'm realizing you're introducing a new topic. No, no, I'm, I'm just asking questions. Mm. Number three, Sam. Mm. Where was GSU on 25th June when the city was going up? I know there is GSU and then there is GSU. But I will tell you, when the Nairobi command wanted backup, mm. Where were those? There are questions, even as we get angry about what has happened and we deal with the things so, so that have actually you, you incidental actually know to I am the asking questions. Who are in town? Sam, I am not a child. I was born in this city. I have been in public affairs for a very long time. I am an old man now. I'll be turning 40 soon. I'm not a child. I've got white hair. So the questions mm -hmm. I ask come from a place of knowledge. They come you know, from you know, a place. You know, I had the cabinet secretary for interior affairs. He doesn't know. I'm just telling you, that, that's what I'm, actually, I'm asking a question that Sam, yeah. the Nairobi command, in whose hands was it at the time when we almost lost the republic? Those questions are important questions, and as much as we are serious about the demands put out by Gen Z's, mm. there are questions you will ask, for example, when City Hall, the seat of the county of Nairobi, is going up in fire and there is no fire engine, okay. isn't that a question? Okay. When All right. All right. the legislature is actually going Let, up in fire. Let's leave that because I need to hear the closing yeah, so remarks from Those AC. are my questions this morning. I have nothing to take home, just questions for the people of Kenya to think about. You already did And that. much more. Don't rehash it. Yeah. Closing. I, my closing remarks will be in answer to some of his question, to those questions, some of the questions that Arnold has posed. You know, I started off by saying that there, there is a, a phrase in, there's a scripture in Ecclesiastes that talks about to everything there is a time and a season, right? And I think that what we are looking at in Kenya, and we are not discerning the time and the season that we are in, mm -hmm. is that we have a political class, or let me say a political mindset that is obsolete. You can talk about family, you can talk about church. The question that we should be asking is, those structures, whether the church has been responsive to the needs of the people, whether those families or that family that you are talking about that is now complaining about the withdrawal of resources to them, have they been responsive to the people's needs? We have a Department of Social Services that actually is supposed to address many of the, uh, the malaise in society and is supposed to be allocated resources. What do you say about a government that will allocate 600 million mm -hmm. to the office of the First Lady and 400 million to the State Department of Gender? You know, uh, a, a constitutionally mandated office to deliver services to the people and one that is not accountable. So what I'm saying is, my closing remarks are, Kenya, we are in a turn of a season. It is like a woman whose time to give birth has come. 
at that time, there is no dignity in it. Wherever you are, that baby will come. It is messy, but the new Kenya must be born. We have a political class that is at odds with where this nation needs to go. They do not want us to manifest the aspirations that are captured in the 2010 constitution. They are taking us backwards. Look at the kind of legislation that we are getting. It is backward. Look at the conflict of interest bill. Look at even some of the things, creation of an office of opposition, whereas it is the parliament that should be acting as opposition. We have a political class that is at odds with where Kenya needs to go, right. with the, 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 the makeup of the citizenry. And my call to Kenyans is we must not waste this moment. We must push until the new Kenya is born. Okay. Let that which will burn, burn. Let that which will collapse, collapse. Let the curtain be torn. Let Kenya go free. And we must demand that freedom. And that's what John Z are saying. They have refused. We are not going to continue to carry this burden. I hope, like, other, like uh, David Ocheng, his colleagues in parliament have become born again. But all those who will not be mm. born again into this moment, they will die with the system that is dying because it is a system that is dying and it must die for new Kenya to be born. And I have to thank all of you One for watching. Up. Allow me to deny you time because it's eight minutes after 8 a.m. No, I can't, I can't, uh, because Safina Cheng Oma is already in studio. Um, <laughs> uh, you have to negotiate with her, David Ocheng. <laughs> um, but Sam, I may just say that it's time Danny, to reclaim the solo and, of the country. Uh, <laughs> Arnold Maliba has sent a sign for making time for us. Gatheno Moshomba had confirmed to come. And she did come because she had particular reasons. My name is Sam Gituku. See you again some other time. Bye for now.